Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, go ahead. Welcome to Movie the Podcast. That's right, Movie the Podcast. It Ooh. is still. <laughs> It's uh, John Goodmarch, but we are. Yeah, this is this is my birthday format. pick. This is yeah, this is TJ's birthday pick. We watched uh, Robert Redford in The Old Man and the Gun, uh, and uh, uh, a movie that I might lose a friendship over. Um, ooh, quite that's frankly. Funny. Oh God, I'm so glad you're on my side with this. <laughs> I uh, yeah, I um, I am befuddled by this film. Um, so yeah, we'll get into that. We'll get into but, that. Yeah, we might not be friends anymore with a, a certain listener of the show. Uh, I don't after, think that's after, after this I week. Think, I don't think that's the case. I mean, it's, not <laughs> like hate, it's not like you hate Jaws. I love Jaws. That would be a wild take. <laughs> you yeah, know what? No, We've been doing this I for seven years. To, I fucking hate Jaws. I wouldn't want to be friends <laughs> with that guy. Yeah, I got the Jaws tattoo just for just for whatever. It's like the old man in the shark. Street, it's, street like, it's like you get, you get a Jaws tattoo removed, like a hate tattoo. You're like, oh, fuck this movie. <laughs> like it doesn't represent my life anymore. <laughs> I bet that I bet I had over to the get course in, of in fucking Kino prison just to survive. I bet no Jaws <laughs> tattoos have ever been removed. I'll just stake uh, that right now. Oh, I don't like know, God. You should you should swim in some of the like ugly tattoo Facebook groups that I'm in. Uh, you'd be you. I mean, for well, how about no thing? good no good tat no good Jaws tattoos. No one's ever turned a corner on Jaws and said, you know like what? How many no people more. do you think have the chalkboard drawing just that with no contact? I have a T-shirt of it, and I love yeah. it. I've if I, if it. I had any balls at all, I would get that tattooed on me. I mean, there's there's better designs to get tattooed on you from Jaws, I feel like. but It would be a good scratcher tattoo, though. Oh, I, know there's a top I mean, I've there. seen yeah. it. I've seen people have it. So um, Anyway, uh, what did y'all watch this week? What did Jaws watch? This? We watched Old Man with a Gun, by the way. Uh, uh, David Lowry film. Oh, uh, that even makes uh, it even worse. Yeah, I uh, a movie that was very I I uh, I mean at this point I feel overhyped to me to death. It's the whole reason I have why a theory. I picked it. And uh, I feel like maybe I've learned more about a certain person. I think maybe he's going through a midlife crisis or something. I don't I don't know. We're gonna get into it though. Uh, but what did y'all watch this week? I'm going to start with my man to my virtual diagonal upper left. Alex. It's right there, guys. Uh, it's left. different for me. I know. Well, I said mine. I said mine. There, I, li- I have a life outside of you, you know. Fair enough. <laughs> Not much of one. <laughs> Alex. Fair enough. <laughs> um, I watched five things. Oh my Lord, God! I said so God. <laughs> yeah, well, this is a couple. This is two weeks. Two yeah, weeks. That's a good point, actually. That's yeah, that's fair. Um, first movie I watched, Ricky Stenicky. Mm-hmm. Uh, the I, John Cena movie that we were talking yes. about, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Not great. Oh, the, that's a shame because the clips, the John Cena clips, legit had me cracking up. The clips are good. It's John, like some- John Cena is really funny. Zac Efron is horrendous. Mm-hmm. And that redheaded guy is awful. Alex, oh, he's from he's from that Bobby Lee podcast, guys. You know that guy. Oh, that guy's oh, funny Andrew on the podcast. He's something. no good in the movie. Yeah, yeah, he's no good. He's no good in the movie. Alex, isn't the movie roughly the plot of, the, of like that? Uh, well, there's an American Dad episode and a South Park episode where they like make somebody up to fall for a crime, but it's actually a real person or something that comes back to kill them. Uh no, kind of. They make okay. up as kids. They make up this guy, and then they blame him for like every shenanigan they get into as they're growing up. And then eventually, like their families and shit are like, "Well, we need to meet this guy." So then they hire John Cena, who is a jerk off song parody themed uh, Atlantic City entertainer. I mean, they get, they get him <laughs> to uh, play the the titular Ricky Stenicky. The premise is good. John Cena's really funny, and pretty much everything he's in it. But the other characters, like I couldn't, like they were just blah, like all around. That's a shame because oh. uh, Zac Efron really won me over in the Iron Claw, so I was re- I was ready to be a, on board with a, being a Zac Efron fan from now on, but. I remember I liking him in was it Neighbors? 
The uh, woman they lived with. Uh, yeah, the I don't college. like that movie a whole lot. Didn't you like you like Bay? Didn't you like the Baywatch movie? Someone I did it. not. No, the Baywatch movie oh. was very bad. I, didn't think, I thought bad. the Baywatch movie was okay. But that was, that was before, before you were out on Dwayne. Yeah. But also his all his with his WWE promos, I'm coming back in on him. Okay. Yeah, he's had some really good promos. His, his promos have been absolute fucking fire. Um, but anyway, Ricky Snicky, not great. Mm. Next up. Mm. <laughs> I love the energy. You sound like you uh, just popped a zin. Movie called Arizona. The Arizona. Like seven or eight years ago. Go uh, Is it about Ice T? No. It stars <laughs> uh Danny McBride. Love him. And Rosemary DeWitt. I don't Luke know who that Wilson. Is. She was what was she in? Was she in X Men? No, that's Rose no. Byrne. Oh, okay. No, Not related to John. Was she the protagonist in Bioshock Infinite? She that was not. Was, I, I wanted to say that was she Elizabeth. Was, uh, I forget her last Booker name. DeWitt. Book, oh, Booker DeWitt. Yes, correct, correct. She might have been in like the first seasons of like Weeds, maybe. Or okay. I don't. I, I can't remember. She was in some one of those drama shows, or maybe it was uh, the first seasons of like the United States of Para. She was in, in some like prestige show. I can't right. remember what. Um, Arizona's not great. It's about, it's set in, uh, Arizona. Michigan. <laughs> and the, uh, after the real estate bubble was popped and Danny McBride had bought a, like, huge big mansion in the desert, cut to the present, and he's, like, underwater several times over in his house. Uh, his wife left him with the kids. He goes to confront Seth Rogen, who is his realtor, and accidentally kills him. Oh. It was wit- witnessed by Rosemary DeWitt, so then he kidnaps her. Um, his wife, is, it, is it like dark or is it? It's, it's like a, it's a it's a dark comedy. Okay, but it was a little too dark for it to be funny. Oh, um, DJ, have you ever seen the Jonathan uh, Dem movie Rachel Getting Married? Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's the lead in that. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know who yeah. she is now. You look up and see what show it was she was on, because that was bothering me. Yeah, I can find out. It was Go like ahead. an HBO or Showtime show or something. Um, Kaylin Olsen is in it for a minute, and she's fine. Luke Wilson's in it for a little bit. Um, it gets really dark with lots of uh, people dying, unfortunately, at Danny McBride's crazy hands. Um, but it's not very good, and there's a reason nobody's ever heard of it. It popped up on, like, Hulu as a, like, one of their recommended things. Oh, right. I want to say the guy who was in the United States of Terra, Alex, she's also in Mad Men. Okay. Um, the guy who directed it, I don't think he directed any other movies, but he's directed, a, like, several episodes of all the Danny McBride shows. Oh, okay. He directed several episodes of, uh, What's the baseball one? Why am I East playing? Eastbound and down. 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 Yeah, Eastbound and down. A few episodes of The Righteous Gemstone, Vice Principals. So he's like a Danny McBride guy. And probably, I think that they probably as, met, as reading, yeah. yeah, as I was reading about it, I think that's how, that's pretty much how he got it made because he got Danny McBride to star in it. Dan um, stands. Well, Danny McBride yeah. is, is great. We're rewatching The Righteous Gemstones right now and god damn, that like, that, like one of the, that. that might be one of the best shows like, Best comedies ever. It's so fucking good. And everybody's so goddamn good in it. Um, watched a movie, the only movie I ever walked out of in a theater. We rewatched oh. it. Oh no. Did you walk out of your house? No, I didn't. <laughs> I, I walked out back. I walked out back and I slammed the door. Uh, watched What Dreams May Come. You walked um, out of the theater or that? I remember liking yeah. that movie a million years ago. Well, you know, when I was 17 or 18 and took a date to it, and yeah, yeah it wasn't it was the, like the, this movie. This movie this is, is sad funny. and weird. I'm not fingering yeah. anybody. <laughs> this movie yeah, is not. Yeah, this is not weird. funny and at all. I, I don't. What I recall is that the 
it, it's a real uh, fast food nation. Well, the trailer <laughs> was very incongruent with the tone of the movie. Like, I feel like the trailer for that, and I didn't rewatch the trailer, but I feel like the trailer was fairly, like, lighthearted and, like, it was, like, colorful. Funny, it was, like, Cuba Gooding Mule. Yeah, because, yeah. like, uh, it's, it showed yeah. all, like, the all the happy parts. It was, like, the paint and all the neat, neat like, paint effects yeah. and stuff like that. It didn't show yeah. him going to literal Horrific purgatory car crash. to save, <laughs> to well, save his they... wife's eternal soul because she killed she, herself. Yeah, she killed herself, right? Yeah. Which, I, she speaking killed of, herself uh, after their kids are killed in the car crash, and oh, then man. five years later, he gets killed in the car crash. Getting out, trying to save somebody that was already in a car crash because he's a doctor. Oh my god! Yeah, that's yeah, that, he was a doctor that, with the clown nose. That movie, yeah, that same doctor, very hard. <laughs> but like <laughs> the movie, it's like upon rewatching, like it's really good, and like yeah. it's it's tremendous. It's kind of hard to sit through at some points because it's really yeah, uh, sure. poignant. Speaking, but, speaking of like good. sweet and, like, things with wives and Alec, I gotta before I forget, I was telling uh, my girlfriend the story about at your wedding, at, where like they ran out of plates or whatever, so I was eating out of the serving dish, and she's like, "Oh, how old are you?" I was like, "I was like 38. Oh man, I uh, I, I watched this guy real quick. Uh, I can't think of his name. Uh, Sean knows who he is because he used to do a wrestling podcast. Uh, he's got like red hair. He's one of Pete Holmes' friends. Oh anyway. yeah, he was. He's he, on the. He plays Commissioner Gordon in the Pete Holmes uh, yeah, Batman. That show. guy. That yeah. guy. Oh, the guy he, from, uh, uh, oh no, never mind. He has a, a TikTok channel where he just reviews old VHS tapes that he finds. It's it's actually quite entertaining. But is uh, the best part is him finding commercials from the '90s and stuff. And they, in one of the videos, he found a Big Lebowski commercial, and the Big Lebowski commercial is literally the like clips from the bowling scene, and the voiceover is for anyone who's ever fallen in love, the Big Boy, Lebowski. It's and it's like, <laughs> what the fuck does that have to do with the Big Lebowski? And he like cuts back to him, and he's like, they had no fucking idea how to market this. No. Movie. Like what for, any, for anyone that's happen? ever fallen in love, I'll suck your cock for a thousand dollars. Yeah, who falls in love in that movie? Like I don't I even know where Lebowski you would... kind of with the I mean, rug. I kind of kind of fell in love with Julianne Moore. Oh yeah, yeah but like uh, Boogie Nights yeah. for me for that one. But anyway, I'll go ahead. Sorry, I just you talked about a poorly marketed films. Yeah. That one really caught me. For, it was like for anyone who's ever fallen in love, like <laughs> yeah. What dream? What dream? Maybe they're talking uh, about the Jesus. <laughs> um, it's pretty good, and the uh, all those weird like paint effects hold up like remarkably, and it looks so it's so gorgeous. Who it's, directed uh, that? Do you know? Uh, I, I can't, can't remember. Run. Somebody who directed. I, I think he directed one or two well, other look, Robin Robin Williams. I'm looking movies. it up now. Um, after that, I watched Greenland. Greenland? Greenland? Oh, the one about the meteors? Yeah. And that movie is something else. Uh, Gerard Butler's is awful. He's so bad. Yeah. That movie's not good. <laughs> He's just so bad. The movie's not good. Like, I love the um, content of it, and I love, like, you know me, I love a global... Yeah, you love a disaster. planet annihilation. <laughs> you love... Yeah. yeah, you love your apocalypse. Like, Alex Seeker and so. Unicron. Or, our like highest <laughs> listened to show ever is uh that Australian These Final Hours. Yeah. Well, like, that movie, like, it's that like movie eleven thousand eleven thousand streams. I mean all of Australia for, dog, dog for, day afternoon has like four. Good for like, us. Like, like, nobody, nobody nobody has heard of that movie before you put it on. So yeah, hopefully we turn some more people on to watch it, because I thought it was really good. Yeah, I liked it a lot. That's my oh, the What Dreams May Come guy ending. director, by the way, has directed nothing that I've ever heard of. He did write Aliens 3, though, which is very odd. Uh, I yeah, everybody wrote that movie. What was but he, uh, he, he has directed M Map of the Human Heart is a movie that sounds familiar, but I don't know what it is. He directed in 93, he directed that. Then he directed in 98, What Dreams May Come. Then he didn't direct another movie until 2005 called River Queen. And then in 2008, he wrote, he, he directed Rain, like, like the weather, Rain of the Children, 
which is an hmm. awful, awful title. <laughs> I'm taking your favorite song out of the jukebox. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Um, I don't I forget, even know. Oh, real quick. What's Cuba, is Cuba Gooding Jr. an angel? What is his role in the like, he, his part of play? He is son. kind of an angel. He is his son, but he took the form of his former doctor friend so as not to be so jarring when he first met him. Con- contact situation. Um, uh, but yeah, what reason it comes tremendous? Greenland is not tremendous. Um, it's the opposite of tremendous. Mm. Uh, the last thing I watched was oh, I watched the uh, Argyle. Ooh. Oh, oh, I'm dying to know how is it. Let me tell you, man, Matthew Vaughn. Uh-oh. Uh- it is uh the first three quarters are really good. I enjoyed it. I thought it was pretty fun. And some twists in there that I didn't expect. Everybody's really good in it. The last, I got. I honestly, I need to rewatch the last like half an hour or so. I was high as shit, <laughs> and he has. There's a ton of these crazy visuals and stuff, and I could not keep track of what was going on at all. Like there was so much, like gunfights and shootouts, and like. <laughs> And these, like, they're in these hallways, and they throw these smoke grenades that are all, like, multicolored. And, like, it's fucking wild. And I, I couldn't keep track of what the actual plot was. Um, well, it sounds like you didn't hate it. I didn't hate it. Yeah. I wouldn't say it's, as, as, as I don't think, it's better, it's better than Kingsman 2. It's not as good as Kingsman 1, I don't think. But I still thought it was, it was, I really like Kingsman And, too. like, there's a lot of, there's some twists and turns in it that, like, I, I really didn't see coming. Which, with all like the spy movies and shit that I've seen in my lifetime, it's yeah refreshing. That you've a, seen, you've seen just about just about everything. How's um, Rockwell in it? Rock, he's, I mean, he's great. He's tremendous. The rules. He's like Alex. Did you see Gentleman Broncos? Yes, I, I've Gentleman. seen it. I so don't. Uh, I I need to rewatch it. Yeah. I, I, oh, saw, yeah, and I remember yeah. not loving it, but like I love everything else Jared has has done for the most part. So I don't know why I didn't love it. I would need to rewatch it. Um, but yeah, I thought Argyle was it's good. Uh, what's her name? Bryce Dallas Howard is really good in it. Uh, Sam Rockwell is good in it. Brian Cranston is the uh, villain is tremendous. Um, yeah, I recommend it. It's on the flex, so. Give it a watch. Don't cost nothing. Yep, don't cost nothing. Um, hey, Alec, <laughs> would you say that it looks like it cost more than Dune 2 because it did? <laughs> no. No way. <laughs> no. Yeah, that's, that's wild crazy. to me. Yeah. I guess sand is cheap. I mean, yeah, I guess when you, your whole movie is sepia tone, that you can really get away with a lot of, uh, you don't need a lot of color palette no, in there no. or anything. <laughs> Sand worms, though, very expensive. <laughs> yeah, actually growing those things took forever. Mm. <laughs> uh, More temperamental started, than not, goats. Not started, but we, we are picked back up on this uh, show that I think you guys would all enjoy. It's uh, It came out on Peacock a few years ago, and now it's on Netflix somehow, called Girls 5 Eva. And it's really <laughs> funny. And it's the same, like creators and producers is 30 rock and it's really in like the same tone but even like a little more ridiculous it's about a girl band from like the early 90s who fell apart and then they come back together to like regroup but it's, it's I, really I, I like the sound of that that, that it's really got, really funny you got me in with girl rock band i'm, I'm already you know uh, yeah. partial to that the group's name is girls five eva because forever is just too short <laughs> Already, that's um, pretty funny. It's pretty good. Yeah, it's really funny. It is really like out there. Like it's like their jokes are insane. It's kind of what uh, Kimmy Schmidt strived to be, but didn't quite hit. Oh yeah. Um, I'd say it's better than Kimmy Schmidt. I know that's a mixed opinion in this room, but yeah, I'm not a fan. Um, I like yeah. the first season of Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. You would. I liked all of it. I did, but it's, it's not, I don't think it's it's not as good as uh, I don't think it's as good as this. Um, but that's on Netflix now, so 
check the that flute? shit out. Anything um, else, Mr. Alec? No, that's it. Gogs. Uh, I watched two things. Um, I watched, like, the greatest, one of the greatest sci-fi movies ever made. Table. And I also watched Dune 2. Um, <laughs> so I watched... Up, starts up bloopers? <laughs> no, I got, no, I watched, uh, uh, I watched, uh, Predators. I revisited it, went back to the well. Still love it. Movie's a lot of fun. It's all second act. It just goes. No one cares about any of the rules. No one is interested on why they're here or what's going on. It's just Adrian Brody like designed it. to hunt like monsters. Predators. I haven't watched it in years, but I remember enjoying it. It's a lot of fun. Is it, it's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, Adrian Brody just, just doing his Christian Bale voice. It's just. Yeah, that growling is, is weird. Oh, I love it. Uh, we just got flushed out. I'm like, okay. Okay, Adrian Brody. Like, Liz walked by. She's like, is that Adrian Brody? I was like, yeah. Yeah, it is. She said, why does he have a shotgun? I was like, I don't he, know. <laughs> he went through a phase uh, for, like, a few movies in that period where he was, like, trying to be an action hero, Adrian Brody. It was it was an odd period. And then they blew him out in an airlock somewhere and no one saw him ever again. Yeah, yeah I, what has he done? He, he's, he's still doing, like, uh, Wes Anderson movies, right? Like, that's kind of like what he, oh, yeah, he landed. Uh, yeah, that's true. So, um, and then I watched, uh, me and TJ saw Dune 2. We were talking about it before the show. Just what? My only complaint is I want more Dune. TJ, did you see uh, anything before? Because Dune 2 is all I saw. Yeah, yeah, I saw something. I go ahead. Something else. Uh, why don't we, just, let's, let, let's go to TJ and then me and Sean can gloat or can just glom on Doom. Uh, I watched Dune. one, one of the I think I watched other things, but I can't remember. Um, but I watched one thing I wanted to talk about because I think it's incredible. I watched a movie called Stop Motion, um, and it's like, like one of the best. Movies. It's like one of the best horror movies I've ever seen. Well, maybe not ever, but in the last like, it, it's a movie that shook me. Like as soon as I was finished, I was kind of I was just like kind of reeling. And I, the only, the only movie recently I can think of that gave me the same kind of feeling was Midsummer the first time I saw it. Like, it like left me kind of like in a state of like, what the fuck did I just watch? And I need to watch it again. Um, the movie is, it, it's in the vein of like a hereditary, like the movie is definitely about like generational trauma and what it's like to basically be someone else's like, to like to have an overbearing parent that basically like lives their entire life through you. Um, and they use it through the not so subtle metaphor of puppets and puppetry. Um, but it's, it's incredible the way it's directed, the way it's shot, the, the acting is, is incredibly good. The, uh, the use of actual stop motion in the movie, it leads to some of the most unsettling shit I've seen in a movie in a long time. Like um, worse than is, the Phil Tippett thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Well, because the Phil Tippett thing, I mean, Mad God is disturbing, but, like, it's yeah. also, like, it's all puppets, right? And it's also right. in the service of basically a non-plot, right? Like, I, yeah. you and I both really it's, like it's Mad a God demo. a lot. We love it, but, yeah. But it's not a, it doesn't have a story. I mean, barely it has a, a coherent story. But this is, like, wrapped in a very cohesive, well-written story, and... It's kind of a, a, you know, I love my movies inside of movie movies. Like, this is about, like, this, the, the main character is making a movie. And it's just so fucking wild. And there's so much in the movie that, like, this is definitely a movie that will benefit from multiple viewings. Because the ending is, like, very ambiguous. And I really want to watch it again. Um, I, it, it, 10 plus. I fucking adored this Hell movie. Yeah. Stop, stop motion. It's, well, it's on the Plex. It's a really? Shutter movie, so eventually it will be on Shutter. Um, Has there ever been a, a better original streaming platform than Shutter? Like just all the no. original shit they've done. No, and like they've come out with a couple of duds here and there, but like they, to me, they are like. I mean, you know, I, I said this in a film group, and people laughed at me. To me, Shutter is on level with A twenty four with a lot of their original products. Like their shit is awesome. Like they have put out consistent like really solid films. And I know like a lot of the shutter stuff is stuff that they buy and license, but I don't care. I mean, so does a 24, you know what I mean? Like they are, but they are doing like, they are putting eyes on some really, really fantastic stuff. And I, I think stop motion is just 
such a cool ass like horror movie. Again, like I don't want to give anything away because it's definitely something that you need to experience. But like, just the level of like there there is a, sh- a certain shot in this movie that like I can't stop thinking about, and it's just it legit like made me like back up in my chair when it happened. It was like oh like I was like holy shit like and I. I don't know. I I don't I don't really even know the director. Like I didn't even look. <laughs> but I I mean it's it, it's something else and I highly 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 recommend it. Uh it's it's a it's a great watch. It came out last year technically in Britain, but it's a it's not just available over here, so I don't know if, if why me? Why me? I don't know if this can Britain, if, yeah. if this technically counts in my 2024 list. I can't I think, see it not getting it very be- high. Europe sucks. We always, I counted, uh, what is it? The smoking causes coughing is this year, even though it came out in France last year. So I think that that's fair. So, good. so it's yeah. interesting. This guy, the guy that, that made this movie, his name is Robert Morgan. He's only ever made stop motion films before this, which is kind of interesting. Um, but yeah, this, this movie is, I, I thought it was fantastic. I really did. I can't recommend it enough. So that, and then I watched Dune Two with Gogs on edibles, and it was a wonderful experience. I actually yeah. thought I had the sight for a little while because I felt like I was perceiving time differently than, than the, <laughs> the world around me. <laughs> well, let's, gl- let's glaze Dennis Villain away for a couple minutes, and we can talk about this boring ass no movie that we watched. Yeah, uh, Dune Two is and- incredible. I mean, I already talked about it a little bit, but it's. To watch it in IMAX, too, was, I mean, the movie's scale is just so amazing. Like, like yeah, how I, did, I, I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't spring for the IMAX. Yeah. Like, oh, I still had a great time, Alec. Don't worry. There, there, there were people, so awesome. there were people talking about seeing it in D-Box. I'm like, no, thank you. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't want <laughs> oh, in, in, in the chairs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's for Mission Impossible movies, not for movies that you actually got to pay attention to. <laughs> Well, oh my god! Because it's what like was a, this we saw in those. Was it John <laughs> Wick? It was something. We, we I remember, saw. In, I think it was John, John Wick, and it was fucking like awful. Oh, you guys actually sat in the D box seats? It wasn't D box, but it was like one of AMC <laughs> has so like many saying, variations. I just like saying D box. <laughs> but we went. We went. Well, we went and saw. I think it was John Wick three. It was like the Super Sound Theater or something. Oh right, right, right. So, so fucking so like, wow. the, yeah, that was John Wick three. That's why I went the, with you and Stacy. The Dolby yeah. Digital sound, yeah, they, uh, screen like that. that they had. Man, it was fucking rough. Yeah, well, the, the, uh, it was rough sitting through a the, gun the trailer for Twenty One Bridges was also very loud because we saw oh, that trailer yeah. three thousand times. And I saw that trailer in every movie I saw for a year and a half. Yeah, they showed that trailer a lot. Well, Goggins and I saw it in IMAX, and we were up on the the top row so we could make out. And we were like right next to the speaker, and it was it was like being at an air show. It was so fucking loud. That room, that room was filled with sound. Oh um, my god! But like it's and the movie that movie lulled you a lot of like, quiet and that right. like ominous background noise. Then it's like boom, boom. yeah, yeah. Well, because being like this grand space epic, like it's it's a lot of the movies sort of a quiet personal small movie with Paul like become like maybe becoming a Fremen. Like I loved I, I got nothing but glowing. The only thing I'm I always want more of it. Just give me more like give me more. Like, well well it's like when we saw the first one, I'm like, okay, this is amazing. Like it's it, it's the up it's the second one's like as good, I'll be fine. But it like it it's surpasses yeah. I, I think because they started it like two minutes it's like uh, it's kind of like Empire Strikes Back in a way. It's like let's just let's just get to the next part. You know what I mean? There's no like. Yeah. No, like in the beginning, it doesn't when they're take... in the body. I was like, oh, that's Jameis. Like this literally yeah. just happened. Like we yeah, are. Like don't waste my time with a half an hour recap of the first movie. Don't explain anything, which uh, thankfully they didn't. Like just fucking make the, just do the movie. Nothing. Yeah, and I mean it's one of the biggest changes from the book is that Paul doesn't spend as much time with the Fremen. I mean. He has a whole ass kid in the book, but like, yeah. it, well, Aaliyah, Aaliyah gets born, and she's yeah, like well, two or three by the time that. Yeah, and I read, yeah. Um, I, I read something that the screenwriter wrote, and I, I totally agree with him. The reason that Aaliyah wasn't born is because they thought that, well, one, like logistically, I guess, I guess they shot all of Dune like on location, yeah. like in some desert somewhere. But they said that, like, logistically having, like, a toddler in that environment is, like, very difficult Terrible. and would probably not work. 
And then they were like, well, we could CGI it. And they're like, yeah, that's going to look like shit and not work. Or so the then they're CGI, like, yeah, the CGI baby from uh, Twilight. <laughs> <Ali McGill. laughs> they, they, actually mentioned that, they mentioned that baby in that article. It's funny you say that. But, yeah, I, I didn't really have a problem with that change. Like I, No, all, and, the, and all the, the changes they made I thought were, were the, fine. Like they, the the big screenwriter, reveal. Well, the screenwriter said that the other idea was that they the reason they didn't do the time jump is because they wanted to make – Again, you know, the, the movie's called Dune Part 1 and Part 2, right? So they wanted to make it feel like a more cohesive whole. And they felt like the death of Paul's father was was more of a motivator in this plot than it would be if he waited two years. And it's still a plot point in the book, but I get what they mean. Like, I understand. I get where they were coming from with changing it, and I'm not mad at it. Because this movie, it takes place over the course of, like, a couple of months. months. Yeah, not yeah. like years. I gotta I read the books, or I at least well, gotta I think, read. I think it was like read the I think it was like nine months. I think it was like the gestation period of Aaliyah. Like, cause it, like, cause Rebecca Ferguson goes from not showing at all to being like full blown pregnant, and she's a future baby. They might only take a few months. Yeah, well, I mean, I, like I got into like the sex of the baby. Maybe they can. Well, that's the other thing. I was like, like maybe she has like super Benny Jesuit keggles, and she's just holding that baby in till she feels they, like having it. They do a really good. Timothy Chalamet does a really good job of playing like still kind of villainous and sit, like. There's a scene mm-hmm. towards the end where he yells at his mother. Oh, that's yeah, so good. You know what I mean? And it's like, oh, he's still this brat. You know, like it, even with all this other, and he's also like a victim of circumstance. Like it's so perfect. I mean, I and I know think, it's from the book, to, but like, your, he, go ahead. No, 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 God, you finish, sorry. And then like, I know in the books, like Stilgar's like a true believer. And I know in the movie he kind of is too, but like, there's that line where he's like, it doesn't matter what you believe. It's what I believe where you're kind of like, it, it does. is he really that much of a true believer? Or does he just need to believe in something to make everything make sense? You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah I definitely read that in the movie. I don't read that in the book, but I read that in the, definitely in the movie. But but I wanted I want to say about you know Paul and his kind of dark side is that like Lady Jessica is a very complicated character and also kind of a shithead you know what I mean like I yeah. felt like I was did a good job her straight with villainous in this movie. Well, I again I think that she's she's a result of her training right and her and also like she she also loved Leto. Leto. Yeah, so exactly. it's like, you know, she's bent on revenge. It's like, she's, I mean, she's it's, very it's very mean, South Korean. It's very means to an end. Like, whatever yeah. it's going to take to get them dead, she will do. And like, can we go back to, if we can go back to Stilgar for a second. I have two questions. One, because I forget, and two, just, well, yeah, the, the mother's not even a question. It's just a statement. Before the show, I was saying that I think Javier Bardem steals every scene he's in in that movie. He's I think fantastic. he's just, I think he's the best, I think he's the best performance in a movie that's full of almost flawless. Well, shout out to Batista for playing like an aggressive, violent coward. Like, yeah, he did a no, really yeah, job yeah, with his, yeah. 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 He's so good in the movie too. But did in the book, and I forget, does Paul actually kill Stilgar to take the, to, no. to, be, to come no. control? Okay. No. I didn't, all right. I couldn't remember if he did Stilgar, that. Stilgar, it's just like in the movie. Stilgar becomes basically his like war commander because I, I also one one thing I liked about the both the book and the movie is I enjoyed the fact that like I I, I always kind of read this as subtext but like everybody in the galaxy is scared of the Fremen because the rest of the galaxy is soft from like yeah. technology and like they actually have to fight like cuz like underlying theme of like all of Dune is it's all about like humanity like cause right. there's there's like explicitly no aliens in Dune yeah. it's all humans well, and, and also like, there's a Betty Jesseret like we have to test to make sure you're a person we have to make sure you're a human right. like that runner is in there it's a huge part of the books but I like how like the Fremen are like basically the what the hell does that mean Alec raised his hand he wanted to say something oh I have a, I have a question that's neat I didn't know you okay. could do that go ahead Alex. buddy um, are in the books? Are there Fremen? Are the Fremen <laughs> all throughout the galaxy, or are they only no, on? They, they send the rockets at, at the end of the movie when you see Paul be like, I guess spoilers for Dune Part Two. Uh, when you see Paul like go fucking get him, that is yeah. the beginning of his first crusade or jihad, where he sends his Fremen out into the galaxy to rein <laughs> everyone in. Yes, Alex. <laughs> No, I just bothering DJ because he can't figure oh. it out. <laughs> I found it. I know. I, I think I found it. It's the hand on the bottom. 
<laughs> yeah. Um, like it, be- it becomes a big thing in the in the book because he said he just turns them loose on the galaxy. Oh, he killed 65, 65 billion people it, 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 between the first movie and the second movie. So yeah, all his worries about about like death and famine. Oh yeah, it's totally founded. Yeah, he's he he. he um, if they just recognized his claim to the emperorship, then it wouldn't have been a problem. Yeah. Oh, also, if if the emperor didn't kill his father and try to like fucking take over the planet underneath his talk about his getting head. hoisted on your own petard. No, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no comeuppance. Um, how good is that scene in the caves where he actually finally oh. like takes power? Yeah, that's so that. Good. Him speaking the different languages and using the voice like so good, all in like different like patterns. Oh my god! That, oh, it's like, like it's, it's like so you're good. sitting there watching it. You're like, hell yeah, fuck Israel! I'm going there right now. <laughs> <laughs> the dude's like, the dude's yeah. like he's, he's like calling dude oh. guys. Like you're you're thinking about your grandma right now. Hold, hold you're on, thinking hold on, hold about on, hold like go ahead. Yes, TJ. Was it just to do that? Was that it? Was that the no, 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 no? It's Sean talking about Israel. Hey, this has nothing to do with Dune, but but Gogs and I. The, there was a trailer for some Kevin Costner movie oh before God, no. Dune, and it's like a fucking classic, like Western, and it's literally like we got to get these these white people across the West, and we don't care like, who the trailer stop. started. I was like, is this Oregon Trail? And it's just and all it's about like, getting. It's like it's about the cavalry yeah. clearing the way for westward expansion, and it's not done with one of those like. It's not like the Scott no. Cooper movie. Yeah, it's yeah, not I mean, like you're thinking about it. about it. It's not like it's hostile. not like you're thinking. It's not like you're reminiscing, like going, "Oh, we shouldn't have done that," or like you're cha- no. people seem to be challenged by the idea of doing something yeah. terrible. It's literally just Native Americans bad. I can't imagine releasing in this a movie like that in like right now. It's so fucking wild. Me and Goggs were like, "I can't believe we're seeing this." Like, anyway, is it like sorry. a Daily Wire movie? No, it's called, like, New Horizon. It's got a terrible title. Also, it's a Kevin Costner movie, and, like, of, like it's funny because Gogs was like, oh, he directed it and produced it. It's like, yeah, he does that with all his projects because nobody wants to work with him. Yeah. He's like, fuck <laughs> Tombstone. Hey, this is boring. Let's make Wyatt Earp. That's the funniest. That is one of my favorite <laughs> production stories ever. He's like, this movie I'll make my own like, Tombstone I'll make my own with boring ass movie. <laughs> Like... Wyatt Earp is the ultimate, like, you know, the the Marge Simpson meme. It's like all the all the guy at the store said this, all the kids are going for Wyatt yeah. Earp. Wyatt Earp. Anyway, well, Dune is great. I want to watch Cameron it right wife now. thought it was a good idea. <laughs> nobody's even nobody's even mentioned the Austin Butler. Oh, oh he, he is great. Like like Fade Rautha is anti Paul is just. I had a hard time understanding him. I will say he that. was a little I, growly. He he always has to do weird shit with his voice. That's just what he does. And then I saw an interview with him where he says, and I, watching it this time, I had this knowledge and I don't really buy it. I don't really hear it. He says that he's doing a Stellan Skarsgård as Baron Harkonnen in the movie. But I don't. No, I can hear. I heard yeah. that. I can hear that. Yeah, yeah. I don't he's, know. He's just he's keeping it real yeah. gravelly into the back of the throat. I can see that. Yeah. That's that's what he said he's doing in the movie. And do like this uh, like the the Prime scenes. So what? <laughs> like yeah. all those ink fireworks. Oh, the, oh yeah. yeah, so sick. <laughs> the black son of Giddy Prime. So fucking cool. Yeah. The the scene where Gurney Halleck just is moving from left to right across the screen, just ending dudes. Oh, and you <laughs> see him with his little I forget the name of the guitar and dude. The Balaset. Balaset, that's it. Dude, and then like just play but the the Fremen just like like long ball laser pointing all the oh, fucking and so shit cool. to death. Like, I like dude, this. them them with the fucking sand snorkels are popping out doing fucking yeah. flying arm bars and shit. Like that movie's so <laughs> fucking good. Like, the assault on that one sand cr- that one crawler. Oh was yeah, so fucking cool. Well, you, you just gotta wait till the things open. What the fuck do you think I'm doing? <laughs> it's the fucking opening scene with the the fucking Harkonnen commandos, and they're like ascending that mountain. And then getting fucking their their asses handed to them. Oh, yeah. so good, so good. I, can't, I, I just I want to watch it again. I want to watch it right you, now. How do you call the little mouse? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Well, very wise, yeah. my deep. The uh, 
Yeah, no, I was telling TJ, story. whenever, whenever Vance does anything good moving forward, I'm just going to look at Liz and go, Lisa, Lisa Steve. Steve. <laughs> but, uh, just, Oh, shout out to Forrest Pugh also for putting a lot right. of work into Irulan for not having that much screen time. No, Irulan was all – like, she I made that character, like, too. like super relevant. And she, also, shout out to Christopher Walken for, like, a pretty subdued – Like, I was, not I was his fault with, he's distracting. Like, that's yeah. just, you know – no, but he like it was like he was, he the, was the, the, the defiance. I thought he did a good job. I thought yeah. it was great. The, the defiance yeah. in his eyes when Paul's like kiss my ring is yeah. like awesome. Like my the, and ducal, the, my ducal ring. <laughs> and like and, the word ducal sounds so stupid. Like all of the all of the um, fight choreography was like oh, no. the fade route the Paul fight was awesome. Like, uh, it was one. Oh, no, it was great. One thing I want to touch on real quick before we move on, because Sean mentioned it to me, and I, I agree completely. Uh, this movie did uh, a great service to the character of Shawnee, who I think is, and I'm going to piss off book people, I think she's kind of underwritten in the book, and I think she's definitely underwritten in the David Lynch film. Like, I felt like she was more of a character in this movie than in any of the books. No, she's like, like the only. She's like the moral like compass of this thing. Like she's great. yeah. And I, she's not really that in the book. And I was like, well, this is good. This is much better because like well, well same thing book, with Ariel on too. Like yeah, you know, sure. in the in the movie, she's very like calculating, and she's a Benny. Like the way they portray everybody that has Ben and Jesser at training is mm-hmm. so good because they're so consistent. Yeah, like, yeah, no matter their particular personality quirks, like, it always goes back to the whole, you know? Like, and that's so good. Yeah. And I, I also, love this. I, I think they did a great job. Oh, God, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say, speaking of Bene Gesserit and what would be future Bene Gesserit, I love the interaction between, like, the, like the three-minute screen time Anya Taylor-Joy got just as yeah, Aaliyah on cool, the beach. Yeah. Like, I thought that was a fucking cool way to do that. Like, I thought that was – and the conversations that then, like – he Paul would have with Aaliyah through Rachel Ferguson through Lady yeah. Jessica was like I was like this this is a this is awesome like the way that they did could, this it, it, if yeah. you explain that like it could be very corny yeah <laughs> like, you know well, on paper well, it doesn't gonna, work they, they have I mean just wait there's so many things that they're gonna have to like like they're gonna have to really really put their thinking hats on to try to make some stuff coming up not seem so goofy. And if you've read the books, you know what I'm talking about. And I'm not even talking about Leto. I'm Fuck, talking go, about other Go stuff. all the way through, through through Heretic and give me the 10,000 Duncan Idahos and, like, fuck, I don't give a shit. And the what are the, the spinoff Benny Jester called? The uh, uh, fucking – um, Benny Talaxu. The, 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 no, the, the, no, I'm thinking of the uh, the Mar – what the fucking um, – like the Sanctified Mark. What the fuck are they oh, called? That oh, other group, yeah, the, yeah. Uh, I can't think of it. it yeah, they, they get introduced in Chapter House, if I remember mm-hmm. correctly. Anyway, uh, yeah, Dune's great. Dune's All right, great. let's talk everybody, about this bullshit movie. Everybody watch right. Dune 2. No. Um, yeah, so, watch Dune 2. So, Old Man can with I, the Gun – can I give my theory about this movie real quick? Go ahead. Um, I, I'm sorry, okay. I didn't use the hand raising thing, but I'm using the fucking the phone. You should use the hand raising thing. Wait, oh, this feels. Oh, 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 you gotta stop. Gogs raised his hand. Fuck. Sean, go ahead. Oh, thank you, sir. Uh, <laughs> I see that. about zoning sure. restrictions. No, it, it, it's two things. It's one. It feels two like he's things. trying to. Two things. <laughs> He's trying to emulate, like, and TJ will appreciate this, movies like Parker, because movies were just made a different way back then, and they were cool, but, right. like, very stagey. The other thing, it just feels like a, not an in-memoriam, but, like, a Lifetime Achievement Award for Robert Redford being, like, charming. Like, I get that he's charming, you know what I mean? He but like, is charming. That's the, the he's, plot he's of the good movie. In this, he's good in Everybody's this movie. good in it. Like, I love Casey yeah. Affleck, but, like, this guy made Ain't the Body Saints. You know what I mean? You want to talk about, like, a crime movie. And he also made a ghost story, which we all love. And he also made a Green Knight, which we all love. And, like, this is just oh, he made nothing here. Story? Yeah. yeah <laughs> same guy, same director. Man. And Green Knight, like Sean said. And Ain't the Body Saints is really excellent. Yeah. I never saw that movie, but I love it's Green on Knight. The, I love it's on the story. Story. Yeah, this movie. Um, I was I was telling I was talking to Gogs about it a little bit. I I'm think sorry. before I think before he had watched it, and uh, I said like, it's a good movie and it's like well written and well shot and well acted and all that stuff. It just ain't for me. Yeah, like, I, I think I texted Gogs almost the same exact thing. I was like, I recognize that this is a good movie, but it's just I it just 
getting hit. And I like I was bored to tears. I was like cleaning my kitchen while it was going on in the other room. Yeah, I, won, I, I missed well, entire chunks of it and missed nothing at all. You didn't really miss anything because it's kind. Of, that's the other problem with the movie. It's kind of the same thing. It's the same beats over and over and over and over again. Like what if and I, I told get, you I was a bank robber? Well, I don't know. Are you a bank robber? I don't know. Maybe. Burner, burner. <laughs> Casey Affleck at right, home with no conflict. There's no conflict. <laughs> There's zero right, like conflict. I thought like his wife was his, his hot wife from Sonic was gonna leave him. No, uh, oh that's, that's what she was from. What happened in the stupid movie? Okay, um, I'm breaking Anthony's heart. By the way, his heart is breaking. He's not gonna listen to the show anymore. Well, Anthony, I don't, it's I don't, a good movie. I just don't like it. Well, it's funny because I have now, yeah. I, I have, after after this, after we record tonight, I'll have a few days where I'm not going to talk to him about this at all. So I can't wait that he actually listens to it, and then he's going to send me a text about how mad he is about how much <laughs> I dislike this movie. <laughs> it's 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 <laughs> Thursday night or Friday morning, you're going to get some, some oh, angry fuck. texts. Yeah, maybe. Uh, yeah, yeah. We'll see. Anyway, what happened to this movie, guys? It's well, pretty brief. I think it is. It's, hey. it's so the movie. Uh, the movie opens with. I think, I think it's just men. It's just old men robbing banks, and it's just that. Over the, over over the hill game, the, but they but they they rob banks in the most boring way possible. Where well, they, they do like, it with their charm, so they don't yeah. like. So Robert Redford. Can I? Can I Sean was talking about how. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, Sean was talking about how, like, you know, they don't make movies like this anymore. And there is a an old movie trope that I I fucking hate, and it's the gentleman thief trope. I don't like yeah. it. I never Steve's have. The original I Thomas Crown Affair. I think it's stupid, and I I don't like it. And it, to me, it is not. It's not the same. Maybe it's not a fair comparison. But it's like when when Twilight came out and they took all the bad shit about being a vampire and they kind of cast it aside like, oh, you don't have to drink human blood. Oh, you can go outside. It's like if you're a bank robber, you're a piece of shit and you steal from people and you like, I don't care. for. Go ahead, guys. Do you think the movie suffers from the fact that it's based on a true story? Yes. I think almost every movie suffers from being based on a true story, if I'm perfectly honest. I think that Top Gun. I think Dune. Top Gun? <laughs> Gun happened? Uh, I don't planes, think maybe, you know? We have planes I think, on boats. I think that, <laughs> I think if you, I don't know, I, I'm basing this on nothing but feeling alone. But I feel like most, not or maybe not most, a lot of, based on true story movies, they rely on that so heavily that it's like it doesn't have to be a good movie because it really happened. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I, now, I'll take a, I'll give you an example of a great based on a true story movie. Sean probably already knows what I'm going to say. Uh, it's City of God. That movie is fucking incredible, and it shows you some of the most horrific shit you've ever seen. And it doesn't tell you it's based on a true story until the fucking credits roll. Right. And then you see news footage that they re that they they did in the fucking movie, and you're like. Oh my god! Like it blows your fucking mind. But the like, but the whole movie is like it's fucking Gogs' uh, uh, fucking Endgame thing. There's no stakes. Like City of God has a lot of conflict, and most of the movie is a conflict of some sort or another. The entire like, movie is a conflict. Yeah, this is like this is anyway. Good. I, 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 Gogs, you, you Robin Banks. Did the gentleman ghost fucking robs a bank and they they fucking drive away and he 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 sees Carrie on the side of the road and he he should see old man sex charm that there. is sissy spacek yeah, um, yeah yeah he he charms her into getting a ride with him while the cops go jack off or whatever and then they <laughs> like a fledgling romance <laughs> blood Come on, guys, we gotta go jack off. <laughs> so then the rest of the movie is him just kind of being flirty with Sissy Spacek and learning about her life and him reflecting on things in his life, but he's also a bank robber and maybe he is and maybe he isn't. And she's it's playful and whatever. And oh, meanwhile, well, they, 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 they rob a bank. He's a bank robber. No, no, no. Like, you, to, to, to Sissy Spacek, he's like, oh, maybe oh, I'm a bank right. robber. Oh, maybe I'm not. Um, and then. He robs a bank uh, with Casey Affleck and his children 
in it at the time, and Casey Affleck's the like head of bank robberies for Dallas or some such. And then you've got John David Washington in this movie barely, like just completely wasted. Wait, where? I didn't even. He's his partner. Yeah. He's his partner. Oh, jeez. Oh. I didn't even notice. Yeah, it's Denzel's son is his partner, clean shaven. Like, if you close your eyes, you hear Denzel. I love him. He's Shocked. great. Shocked. I um, but he's like barely in the movie. So then Casey Affleck is like, he's sitting there looking like a dick because this guy robbed the bank while he's in there, and his job is to stop banks from being robbed. So, way to fucking botch that one. Um, so then he goes on like, they're like, all right, well, we're never going to find these people. Who knows? And then he just goes into a rabbit hole of finding out about these old men who just charming their way. They charm money out of banks. And yeah, he and everybody two likes two, them because they're, they're and very they like polite. They're polite. And so he puts two and two together and they figure it out. But then they go like the bank, the, the charming boys uh, end up robbing a, uh, they rob, uh, they go big. They, they like rob a big the bank. Louis, Missouri bank and they, they yeah. go for vault and the truck and they get gold out of the deal. They don't just get the oh, bills. Oh, oh, yeah. One of my biggest problems with the movie. The most potentially interesting scene happens off camera. <laughs> and I was like, why did you do that? Like, I think that would have been cool. <laughs> yeah, you don't see them. and that, Yeah, you can do this in another movie, but, like, I was just so bored. I was like, so the one, the one job that goes bad, because nothing goes bad for these guys, like Sean said, nothing. there's no conflict. The one that goes bad, you don't even show. Danny Glover gets legitimately shot, and they're laughing about it later. Like, if there's no world, yeah. like, like they could have gone. I thought it was going to turn into Point Break, right? Because in Point Break, they never go for the vault, and then Bodie's like, "We're taking the vault this time," well, and that's when everything like, goes it sideways. Like they, were, they were going big. It felt like I thought that there was going. Right, there's to also be more... like no escalation. Like it's right. just flat. Like I think I, I texted TJ. Be... I was like, "This movie's super flat." I thought there was going to be dissension among the group because Tom Waits kind of pushes them into this bigger score, even though they're like, we're doing fine. And then yeah, that, that is all resolved in five minutes. Like yeah. Danny Glover goes away. Tom Waits is like, I'm going to go fucking go to the diner or whatever Tom Waits says. Tom Waits is great in this too. He's, he's always good. Yeah. Uh, again, everybody's like competent in this movie. I just, Oh, it's well acted. It's well directed. It's just the like pl a plot is such a straight line. Like it's so like it's just it's the so, most it's the it's the least actiony bank robbing movie I've ever seen. Even in like life. even action isn't necessary, right? Like I'll give you an example of a bank robbing movie that has almost no action that I loved and I think most of us liked it. Sexy Beast. There's yeah. like oh, yeah. fucking no action in that movie, but you were so invested in those characters. And I mean, it, it's not action, but in a way, the dialogue is written so. Ooh. Well, here's, here's, here's a simple way to do anything in this movie. He kind of falls in love. It's it's like kind of rote, but like he falls in love with Sissy Spacek. He doesn't tell her that he's the coolest bank robber on earth. She starts to find out, and that causes a conflict. Like, do I continue to do this thing that I've loved forever, or do I change my ways? Like, it's isn't like, that the plot of like heat? heat for idiots? Yeah, yeah. heat yeah, for he, old people. He, even <laughs> even I think the movie Warm. It, the movie is so the movie is not committed to making anybody a bad person because like there's even that part where, uh, uh, Casey Affleck meets up with the chick that used to be on Mad Men and she was invisible, invisible man. I forget her name. Elizabeth Moss. She's all the men based Elizabeth shows in the movie. Moss. Yeah. Uh, well, she, isn't she in that, that, uh, the handmaid's tale? Yeah, handmaid's tale. Yeah. yeah. Um, she's also a Scientologist, which is all I could ever really think about when I see her on screen. But, uh, Anyway, there's that scene where he interviews her, and basically you find out Robert Redford, like, abandoned his family. And even in that scene, they're like, like, I thought, like, oh, they're going to, like, he's basically, like, addicted to being a criminal, and he's going to hurt the people that he loves. But even that doesn't fucking go anywhere. And yeah. Sissy Spacex basically just left to sleep on the couch. It's like, ah, whatever. Like, you want any soda pop or popsicle? Well, I'm gone. What are you going yeah, I mean, on? I mean, it kind of does. It does kind of have that part of it because he's just addicted to the life. It's like, but the it doesn't have any, It really doesn't have any ill consequences. He doesn't seem like he cares. The, the fucking yeah. last line of the movie is he got arrested and he was smiling. So he wants this. He doesn't give like a shit. He's a recidivist. Yeah, it's uh, like. I mean, he, it's. 
here's the note. I'm going to keep, keep talking about movies that kind of dabble in the same subject matter that I think are infinitely better than this. Fucking Bronson. Bronson is about a movie, uh, a guy that can't stay out of jail because he loves to be in jail so fucking much. But Bronson is a horribly flawed person. That's what the yeah. whole movie is about. What is this movie about? Robert Redford being a good guy? <laughs> like, I don't get it. I really well, don't. Like Robert Redford, I think he's just like, he's like, I, he's like, chasing, he's chasing a dragon, I guess, but he's doing it very calmly. Like, he's been arrested. Like, at the end of the movie, he finally gets arrested. He gets put oh, in prison. Doc, Mr. Guy. Go ahead. If yeah. I could. The Please chasing her. the dragon metaphor is, is a good one, but not for this movie because chasing the dragon, you, you get burned. You, there is some kind of, con- like, when you're chasing dragon specifically is that heroin. Right. Because you can't, you're chasing that high until you literally die. But there is nothing bad that happens to this man in the I whole. Mean, he's going thing. to prison. He he's going to say times. He gets out. He gets out. Yeah. He gets in. He doesn't. He clearly doesn't give a shit. Like I, I don't understand the. He, he's just like the whole movie just treads on the fact that it's like, oh, this is swan song. This is bye bye Robert Redford. We loved you. Just like just cut in like twenty minutes of Butch and Sundance. Like you know they wanted to. You know what I'm saying? Well, like, it's, I feel like they were like. They were, like there's a part yeah. early in the movie, or well, actually, it's almost towards the end of the movie, where he's going through all his escapes, and there's a there's a that's at the very end. There's a cut of him young, like going through the woods, and I wonder if that's like cut footage from some other movie. If it was it's, CGI, it's very good. I don't think it was CGI. I think it was legit from like I mean, he's been in a billion movies. They probably found some old footage somewhere. I actually like that shot. I thought that was like really interesting. So I think I think. But anyway, right. Doc like, finished the synopsis, but you get the idea. He no, look, well, so at some point, right? Like he gets arrested again. So he yeah. gets he gets cute, right? He gets cute, and he sees Casey Affleck. First of all, he left Casey Affleck a note, like "Come and get me." And then, like they've gone to ground. They've 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 stole the gold. They've all effectively retired. He's not Robin Banks anymore. Casey Affleck has nothing else to do except he's he's continue he's researched this. Everybody's kind of he even comes to the idea that this guy's name is Forrest or whatever. Because Elizabeth Moss reaches out to him. It's like, this is the guy that's allegedly my dad, who I think this guy, well, I guess here's the question. He says to Sissy Spacek he doesn't think he has any kids. Do you think he actually knows that she exists? Uh, probably. Because she even says as much. She says, I don't even know if he knows I'm alive. Um, I, I don't know. Maybe. I, 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 I'm going to say that he does. Because, like, he's just aloof all the time. But I don't know. Again, the movie, probably not in the parlance of the movie, because they're so committed to not making Robert Redford bad in any way. So, well, yeah, probably not. So he finally, so he, he, he runs into Casey Affleck in the in a bathroom at a diner, this diner that shows up all over the movie. And he finally, like, he like, he's like, I think he's just, Seeing how you know how cute he can be, and he walks up and he like straightens his tie and says hello or do whatever. What's up, buddy? Thank you. Appreciate it. You go to bed. Love you too. Good night. Um, the uh, Vance, excuse me, Vance, you didn't raise your hand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> next time. Yeah, Lisa and I gave. Um, so now uh, he 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 does this, and then and Casey Affleck like, immediately. Because the guy looks like every sketch and every photo, he's like, "Hey, Forrest," and then they capture him, and he goes to jail. And since he, he then that's when he does the thing where he tells Sissy Space about all the times he's ever escaped. And Sissy Space is like, "Stay in this time." And I guess, I guess being a sixteen times over prison <laughs> escapee and robbing eighty nine <laughs> banks. Only means you stay in prison for two months because <laughs> he stays in prison and she's there the day he gets I'm out. I'm glad somebody pointed that out because I was like, I thought I like fell asleep and woke up. I was it was like, like what movie did we watch where it was like the fighter had been knocked out? Oh, times. Times three. Oh, Ten yeah. Century three. It's the greatest movie ever. Oh, but, <laughs> like Ten 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 Century three destroys this fucking movie. Oh, right? for sure. You think the legal system would have walled him into the building? Like, it was the like, 80s. They would have dropped the fucking safe on him like an Acme thing. Right. <laughs> but anyway, so you think Ronald out. Reagan's putting up with this shit? So, well, he's yeah, white, so, so, yeah. That's true. He is white and handsome, so. So you get kind of like the end of Baby Driver. Shout out to Baby Driver. Like, she wait, the, he does his time. He The lady he loves maybe waits for him. But then 
also like other movies, like he's just addicted to the life. Like it's like it's how I felt about the end of the Hurt Locker. Like when um when Hawkeye comes home and he realizes that this isn't for him and he needs to go back to defusing bombs in Afghanistan. He, he, that's yeah, where he, he feels alive. We make other like, good movies. Right. He's doing movie. it. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. You know, and, and so then he goes and robs Banks and he gets arrested some more. AC Affleck's role is like totally perfunctory. He doesn't even need to be in the movie because again, not to bring up heat for the millionth time. But Al Pacino's freaking out. He's doing stuff. I know who these guys are. I know that. Blah, blah, you know, and there's the whole diner scene. And we all love Heat. That's great, right? Because Michael yeah, Mann is, is We all love Heat. Yeah. Yeah. But, like, there's none of that here. It's like, hey, Forrest, I you also, got you. It's like, oh, I you thought, got me, huh? I guess I'll have and, like, to get out. And, like, there's really okay. tension between him and no. like, There's a scene where his, Did he anybody... comes home. Go ahead. Sorry. There's a scene where he comes home for his birthday. And he's like, I guess he's been either working all night. But I assume he was drinking all night. And he comes home and his family's got cake waiting for him and they wish him happy. It's very early in the movie. And I thought this was going to sort of set up the drunk washout cop, can't catch a break, set up nothing. some tension oh, between I, him and his wife. I, but his wife and family are the most supportive people of all yeah. time. Again. And his boss is totally cool with him not getting his job done. So Casey Affleck's doing fine. Well, and I thought, I thought, so he's actually at the first bank, well, not the first, but he's at one of the banks that gets robbed while it happens, and I thought that was going to lead to more, like, interpersonal conflict with Casey Affleck, but no, this movie is just, like, conflict, we don't need that, like, I don't, I don't get it, I don't understand. It's subverting your expectations, you expect I mean, it to be a movie truly, with a functional plot. It truly is, like, I don't, it, it, it every step of the way, it's just like, well, something bad's got to happen to somebody, right? Like, like no, nobody grows, nobody learns anything. <laughs> it's no, this is honestly like, have you guys ever seen my big fat Greek wedding? Yeah, no. <laughs> I love that movie. It's a lot of fun. It's a bunch of laughs, but it's not like there's no conflict from A to B in that movie. It's all just well, there is conflict because like. The, the white Greek people don't like the other a uh, white guy. Yeah, but that's because <laughs> he's not the right. It's something. Yeah, because, it's yeah, something. It's like, father of the bride had more conflict than my big fat Greek. Maybe big fat Greek wedding is just sort of like just uh, just just scenes of people living their life. And, and, and I laugh Windex at it. on it. Yeah. Spray Windex on it. Apples and oranges, right? The portocalluses. But this yeah. this is this. It's just this guy has escaped prison sixteen times, robbed. Almost a hundred banks, and you know what? You know what else is a good bank robbing movie? Hell or High Water. You know what? That has a, a lot of tension and conflict. I was texting, so me and Sean, Sean had just texted me his thoughts. Like, I know I, he said it's like I think I recognize this is good. It's but funny. It's, not, it's funny how we're all texting each other for validation. Like, is it okay that I don't like this movie before we and, do the show? <laughs> and I was about I was about halfway through the movie. I was like, yeah. I'm waiting to see if this turns into Catch Me If You Can. Or yeah. hell or high water because I thought those were the two directions this movie would go, and it subverted my expectations and chose to do neither. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Yeah, it was a seven ten split is, and it went right down the middle. This, this <laughs> movie is fucking mild salsa. Like it's just the, what you don't oh, need it. Why does it exist? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you want to just anyway. wrap it up? Uh, well, no, we got to ask uh, Alex like, about. Yeah, was, thank you. Thank you. Somebody remembers the rules. Alex, Alex, that. Alex, was your favorite part of the movie the <laughs> conflict? No. My favorite part was the old timey cars. That was you know what? That did I I fair, yeah, those were sick. But yeah. But not old old timey, like nineteen eighty one cars. Well he had that one in the flashback where he was in the chase. I don't know that was like a like a a, like a fifties or sixties car. That thing was cool. I don't know what the hell I don't know nothing about cars. I just thought it looked cool. Um yeah, I guess we do scores. I, I don't know. Sorry, Anthony. I, 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 uh, yeah. Uh, who wants to go first? I'll go. Go ahead, Sean. <laughs> yeah, it's, like, it's like we're going to the fucking chair. Go ahead. Yeah, it's not yeah. like, again, this isn't like a, a criticism on the technical proficiency of the movie, but no. it's a two. Like, I just, like, I was fucking miserable bored. Like, this was a two-sitting movie, and I think it's only an hour and 40 minutes long. It's super short, yeah. Like, it is, like, again, it's just a fucking sizzle reel for a charming old man. Like, hey, isn't he, like, this movie could have been a fucking TikTok. Like, mm. and just, like, the, the implausibility of it when it's supposed to be grounded again, he escaped prison 16 times. 
Like why? Like it's fucking absurd. They like, should be they should be hauling him around like Hannibal Lecter. He should be on a handcart, like just chained <laughs> to things at this they, point. They should, dude, Casey Affleck should come out like Denzel Washington. Dude, like, I'm putting you motherfuckers in Pelican <laughs> shoe program. Twenty three hour lockdown. But, but like, oh. I, and like, I don't even feel like the um any kind of like chemistry between him and Sissy Spacek. Like, maybe because they're both older than shit. But like, yeah, like they don't. It's just like they're just kind of there, and it's like, oh, isn't she cute? Remember her? Like, oh, remember him? Like, remember when your mom used to fucking diddle herself to Robert Redford? Like, it's whatever. It's fine. Um, he was good in The Last Castle. Like, I'm trying to think of, like, because he's also in that boat movie that I didn't like. But that was I did like that show. boat movie. Yeah, I didn't yeah. care for that boat movie either. I just it, I don't this know, felt very similar to that boat movie. It's just a weird such one. Yeah. a nothing movie. It's a boking accident. Uh, <laughs> I believe it was a boking accident. I have to go. I have to go now. Uh, Alec. Um, like it's a three. Um, like I said before, it's like I can see why people would think it's a good movie. It's well acted, it's well shot, it's well written. It's just so boring. Is it well written? It's, it's boring for that subject matter. Yeah. Um, it's well written. Like the dialogue's fine. Like there's nothing wrong with it. It doesn't it just, captivate you though. So it's in really my well in my uh, my bank robbing movie, I want lots of action and shootouts. Yeah. yeah. Some people prefer other things apparently in their or, bank robbing movie yeah. or actual high. robbery and not just like a hey man, can I have that money? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it's it's to the point in the early on in this movie they're not convinced he even has a gun. They're like, yeah, he, well, he never used it, and he had his hands in his coat. So I gave him the money, and he was really charming. So like, well, did, did he anybody, have a gun? Uh, yeah, did anybody recognize who that bank manager was? Yeah, it was the guy from wasn't it the guy from Oh Brother? Uh, also, yes, but also the guy from No Country for Old Men in the famous scene where Sukar. Goes yeah, to the, the, gas the coin a yeah. What, what, oh. what time? What time do you close at dark? Dark is not a time. I ask you what time you close. Yeah, hey, you know what that movie movies. had? <laughs> <laughs> Lots of conflict. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want to see Cormac McCarthy's draft of this. <laughs> 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 uh, all right, uh, pass the mic, my friend. He's PJ. Mm, mm. I, I need to just illuminate to y'all that Anthony told me that he watched this movie like five times, and that like it's like his. Did he favorite. do something wrong? I don't know. <laughs> I am like so confused by maybe he meant way of the gun. I, I don't understand. This movie is a five for me, dog, because it didn't it didn't register any emotion. Like I just was so. I, it's funny, I was talking to a friend of mine before we started recording, and I said I was kind of nervous to talk about this movie because it didn't elicit any kind of response. Like, I was like, this movie is boring, but it's not, like, offensively boring. Um, it's it's just it's just very flat. Sean really nailed it. Flat is the word, right? It I can't get over a screenplay that has zero conflict in it. Like, if you broke this down in, like, the classic kind of screenwriting, you know, rising action, falling action, like, what the fuck is the falling action? What is the third it's act? All first act. Yeah. What the fuck Which is, is the, the worst act? act? <laughs> <laughs> we should say first act, worst act. <laughs> I don't understand this screenplay. Like, I just don't, like, I don't know, because it's also, here's the thing, right? It it doesn't function as a character study either, right? Like we could, you know, you can, you can, sometimes you can have movies that defy genre because they're trying to do something else, right? This isn't a character study because you don't really like, again, Robert Redford's character is a flawless, charming old man. So where is the interest? Where is, and I don't necessarily mean you have to be, like, the worst person ever. Generally, in crime movies, that does make it interesting. But, like, he's great, and everybody loves him. So it's like, what? Like, it's almost like, I wouldn't have been surprised he didn't. But I, would have been, I wouldn't have been surprised if Robert Redford produced this. Because the whole movie is just like, hey, 
isn't Robert Redford great? Like, in every character it says he's great. And when he's not on screen, people are like, where's <laughs> Robert Redford? Robert Redford. Like, America's I, sweetheart, Robert Redford. He's a kung fu hippie from Gangster City. <laughs> bro, I don't understand this fucking movie. And it has Sean, like a 97% on Rotten Tomatoes. Sean, you stole it. You took it right out of my mouth. The fucking well, at least somebody Casey stole Affleck, something. Casey Affleck, Casey <laughs> Affleck is, is a good actor, and I know he's not a very yes, good actor. we love person. Casey Affleck. Yeah, I don't care about that. I, I care about it a little bit. It, it does. That's, it does. Not it, in it context bums me movie. out. Yeah, I know, but it bums me yeah. out when I see somebody that I like in a movie and then find out he's like a wanton piece of shit. Well, but, let's stop watching but, movies. I, I know. <laughs> you know how I Have you heard about Hollywood? Um, but he's he's great, and we like him a lot, and he's trying in this movie, but his character is pointless. His character does nothing. And it's like... He it's watches like, a bunch of micro beef. <laughs> he might as well be I, like I, the the EAS tower, like outside of the store, like beep beep, like uh oh, he stole something. So, I just, I really don't understand the function of pretty much any aspect of this script, and it really bothers me. But again, it's not. Again, it's it's competent. Like it's acted well, it's shot well. I liked uh, the overall feel. Like it's it's very it's it's a it's a obviously it's a movie that takes place in the eighties primarily. And I felt like the retro feel is good. I thought that the way that they shot it, I don't know what kind of film they used, but it looked, it had like cool color grading and it looked of the era. You know what I mean? Like it looked like a seventies movie overall. Yeah. And I thought that was cool. But like, again, just the, but it's a seventies movie that like primarily takes place in the eighties. Like again, like it just feels like a facsimile of something. Yeah, no, I agree. And the, again, the script is just so one note. And, watch and Parker though that movie rules or uh, not Parker, Parker whatever the fuck it what is the movie well, you could watch called? the Jason Statham Parker movie <laughs> <laughs> no the uh, the fucking uh, oh we can't think of the we saw a uh, point blank yeah don't watch uh, Get Carter which is also in that genre of film or movie than this did. oh <laughs> the no no the I'm thinking the Mickey Rourke one oh that yeah he did make a Get Carter too didn't he Jesus yeah. Christ. There's there's been several get carters. Uh, anyway, Gogs. Uh, I want to preface this with Anthony's a ten. I love him. He's a great guy. But this movie's a five. It's boo. It's, it's <laughs> boo Anthony or boo a five. Both. Okay, fair. Yeah. Uh, it's you know it is it's everything TJ said. It's well made. It's well directed. It's just like, and I don't hate it, but the whole time I'm just no, sort of waiting for it to do it. something. And what yeah, it this does is, this do is literally is like, when are they going to get to the fireworks factory, the movie? Yeah. So I was just like, uh huh. Hey, I mean, I it's, a meditation, a, it's, it's like a meditation I, on getting old. I got, right? hey, well, I, I don't want to interrupt you. I'm sorry. I got to go off the phone. I got something, another call coming in, but uh, I'm picking Madam Webb for next week. So. Oh, fuck oh, me. God. Really? Mm. Mm. Yeah. All right. Mm. Yep. Mm. All right. Wait, boys. <laughs> All right. See you. All right. Bye. Can, it, can he do that legally? Like, is he allowed to do that legally? We know the rules. We said in the chat. Whatever, whatever we pick next week, every week is available. contingent on Madam Web becoming available. Yeah, God, it's available. So, so in John Goodmarch, we watch one John Goodman movie, and I don't get to. I'm just gonna watch Arachnophobia Gonzo, I suppose. Um, just think of a, a spider themed movie or spider themed spiders. Movie. I don't know what yeah, it is. Arach- Arach- Arachnophobia. There you go. Uh, yeah. Wait. 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 Arachna September. Yeah. Does there need to be a month? Okay. Yeah. Arachnaprophobia. Uh, Arachnaprophobia. So now uh, all April's going to be about spiders. Oh, God. All right, anyway. But, yeah, it's a five. Like, I wanted to like it, too. Like, I was like, ooh, okay, what are we getting at here? I thought it was going to – and it's marketed. What's funny is you Google it, it says crime comedy. And I'm like, comedy? This I, can find comedy? Two, I can find two things wrong with that title. <laughs> like, I was like, okay, well – I'm not laughing. I, I do think my mom would love this movie, so maybe this is that's the target audience. But it's just, eh, it's not. Didn't crime comedy? A crime comedy. So I might just have to sit with Anthony and go. Just tell me, sell me on it. Sell me, buddy. Just sell me. Yeah, um, yeah. This movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm really disappointed. This is gonna be a. This is like a watermark in Anthony's eyes. Friendship because we don't generally disagree on films. There's only been like a couple, so this is the high on the list now. Yeah, and, and coming off the coming off the heels of Oh Brother Where Art Thou, 
kind of shocking this movie to me. I I I I was you know, it's the meme, like that the the guy poking that thing with a stick, like, come on, do something. Yeah. I yeah, I don't I don't get it. I don't get it. Dune ruled. So good, good Dune was Dune. great. Yeah, let's watch Dune again. Uh yeah. all right, so next week is uh Madam Webb. Oh god. Mm. Oh, I don't like that he did that and left. I'm not, I'm a little I don't get might have that. to I might have to go buy some edibles to get through that movie. Some of the like the seventy whatever like the highest dosages. I mean, I, I eat a forty and I am I that's oh. insane. <laughs> that's fucking insane. <laughs> I'm like done. I melted the couch. Oh, oh Madam Webb. All right. Well, that's the show, everybody. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Sorry, Anthony. This is going to make a real, real <laughs> awkward conversation, specifically for me. The rest of you probably not. But I, I, I don't really know how to process this movie. Uh, I'm kind of upset that I wasted my birthday pick on it. But uh, what are you going to do? Yeah. Yeah. Dad wasted his on crawl one year. Yeah, but we all learned a we all learned a lesson with crawl. We I yeah. learned a big old lesson with crawl. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. So. Here we are. Anyway. All right, everybody, that's the show. We'll see you later. Keep it one hundred.